Folks, we want to welcome you to the pulpit of Upper Kingsclere Baptist Church. Um, this is for those of us who are not able to physically come to the church, but at the same time, we do not know who else are listening to these messages online, so we want to welcome you. If uh, God is using the, this pulpit to touch your hearts with his word, we are so delighted that that is happening. But also we want to just let you know, maybe you're saying, okay, where are these people located? We are on Mesrol Settlement Road in Upper Kings Clear. Not hard to find, we're near, uh, not far away from Wollostock Park and King's Landing. So just to let you know where we are. And again, we want to say welcome anytime you want to come and visit with us. We would love to have you. With that, we just want to begin with the Word of God, a reading from Psalms 106. I've been going through each chapter of the Psalm. I won't read the whole uh, chapter because it's a, it's a long one. I just want to just highlight a few verses as we prepare our hearts this morning. The psalmist begins with, Praise the Lord, or give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His loving kindness is everlasting. Who can speak of the mighty deeds of the Lord? Or who can show forth all His praise? How blessed are those who keep justice, who practice righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, in thy favor toward thy people. Visit with me, visit me in thy salvation, that I may see the prosperity of thy chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of thy nation, that I may glory with thine inheritance. We have sinned like our fathers, we have committed iniquity, we have behaved wickedly. Our fathers in Egypt did not understand thy wonders. They did not remember thine abundant kindness, but rebelled by the sea, at the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for the sake of his name, that he might make his power known. Thus he rebuked the Red Sea, and he dried up, and he led them through the deeps as through the wilderness. So he saved them from the hand of the one who hated them and redeemed them from the hand of the enemy. When the waters covered, uh, covered their adversaries, not one of them was left. Then they believed his words. They sang his praise. Turning now to the end of this uh, chapter, reading from verse uh, 44. There's a lot in between that I would let you Take time to read through. In verse 44, listen to how the psalmist ends this chapter. Nevertheless, he looked upon their distress when he had heard their cry, and he remembered his covenant for their sake, and relented according to the greatness of his loving kindness. He also made them object of compassion in the presence of all their captors. Save us, O Lord, our God, and gather us from among the nations to give thanks to thy holy name and glory in thy praise. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting even to everlasting, let all the people say amen, praise the Lord. That same God of the Israelites is our God. And we have come to know him through his son Jesus Christ and through his Holy Spirit that he has given to us. So I pray that God's word would just uh, touch uh, the depth of our hearts. See, God uh, is loving and his kindness endures forever. With that, I just want to take a few moments to pray. Um, as a church body, uh, we just continue to pray for a lot of uh, those who are laid up with illnesses. Uh, we will not remember their names out loud um, as it goes, but there are a few things we need to just pray together. At this time. So if you just uh, bow for a word of prayer with me this morning as we come before our God and King. Father, again, we just want to thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. As we look at the world around us and we see how this COVID-19 is continuing to ravage even many parts of Canada. Lord, we hear about uh, the ravages that's taking place in Quebec, in Ontario, and out west. And Father, not only in our borders, those in the United States of America, and Father, beyond, there are so many suffering 
do this and then. Father, can we look to you? You're the one who gives men wisdom and ability that they would find something that will bring healing to those who've been affected by this COVID. And Father, that they will be able to find medication that would stop the onslaught of this pandemic. We will not forget to thank you the way your hand has been on this province of New Brunswick and North Scotia and Newfoundland. Uh, Father, we want to thank you that your hand of mercy and grace has been over us, that we've had very few cases of this pandemic. Thank you for our leader. Thank you for our premier, Blaine Higgs, and the team that he has. And as they implement some of the ways to curb the spread of this pandemic, Father, give them good wisdom. At the same time, Lord, as we seek wisdom from you, even for our leaders, we pray as a church you will give us wisdom of how we continue to function as a church during this um, interesting times of the pandemic and beyond. Father, we want to pray for our doctors, our nurses, our firefighters, for the police, and those that, uh, Father, take charge in guiding and protecting and helping us. Uh, Father, even the store clerks and those that work on the front lines to um, make it possible for us to receive the food and other necessities that we need. Father, we want to thank you for them. May you watch over them. May you protect them. Father, this day I want to pray especially for our children in schools. We know they have taken precaution to avoid as much spread and infection of this COVID-19. And Father, sometimes it seems that all our efforts can come to nothing. But we are praying and looking to you and praying for your uh, protection over our children. Father, we love them. We do not want them to come in harm's way. And even as we hear one among you know, our own church here that has been laid up, we just want to remember him. And just uh, another young man, Lord, who's waiting for uh, getting some positive word from the doctor, we pray that your hand of mercy will reach out and touch. And those who are laid up with illnesses, Lord, we commit them into your hands, that you may draw near to them, that their hearts may draw near to you. And then, Father, we want to thank you for your blessings on us as a church. You have watched, you have protected, you have blessed us in so many ways. Thank you, Father, for helping us to keep the faith, to trust in you. We know the doctors and the nurses are all there for our benefit. But, Father, we are putting our faith in you because you are our great protector, provider, healer, and friend. So this morning, again, we just bow our hearts, our mind, our spirit towards you and pray, Lord, with a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving for your watch care, your protection, and your love that you've given to us. And then, Father, we pray that the word that goes from this pulpit will not be spoken in carelessness or in pride or in foolishness. Father, we will take your word as you've given to us. We will learn from it. We will apply its truth so that we may grow as people of God getting ready for the great day when you will come and claim us as your own. Until that day, Father, let your Holy Spirit lead us in all truth. And let your truth, Father, work on our hearts, our mind, our spirit, and make us the people of God that the world may see, shining out your glory and your goodness to a dying world. We want to thank you and praise you, Father, for your goodness, your mercy, and your love. For in Jesus' name we pray. My message last week was claimed by the everlasting God, taken from Exodus 13, verses 17 to 22, still in the series of prayer. And uh, this week, back to Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 to 22, and my message is entitled, Led by the Everlasting God. You know, this uh, reminds me as we begin uh, this uh, message reminds me, we know we live in a cruel and a hateful world, and we see this becoming more and more, where a person can give, a woman can give a birth to a child, men cannot give birth to a child, but we have seen how a woman can give a birth to a child and then walk away from that child. 
Now that is very painful and hurtful to that child the rest of their lives when that has happened. But thank God, many a times when a mother has given birth to a child, you know the first thing every mother will do, they claim that child. But you see, it's one thing to claim that child. Then comes the reality that that mother has to look after and raise that child. When I say raise the child, I don't mean only mothers are supposed to raise children. I'm saying both parents have the responsibility of raising and looking after the child. But you see, in this passage, I want you to take a special note. When God claims the children of Israel, having rescued them by a mighty hand out from the land of bondage. Now he doesn't say, look, I have claimed you as my own. And he doesn't just dump them in the desert and walks away. God now takes the initiative to lead his people. Folks, for me and for you as a Christian, if you have claimed that you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ and he has claimed you as his own, we should never forget that now he leads us in all truth and is leading us to the place where he promised that where he is we are going to be. He is taking us to a promised land where there will be no more sorrow, no more sickness, no more death. And I want you to look at from this passage uh, before us this morning in Exodus 13, 17 to 22. And I want you to see how God would lead his chosen people, the people he has claimed for himself, how this God is going to lead them. But you need to remember, you've got a million people who are going to be tracking across the dry, arid lands. They're going to be walking through the enemy land. So you see, you want to be led by, by one who just not is going to fizzle out in the desert himself. And this way I purposely led, uh, put my message with this word, led by the everlasting God. Claimed by the everlasting God. Led by the everlasting God. So that there's absolutely no fear that there'll come a time and a place where God says, I'm too old for this. I can't do this anymore. He's an everlasting God. And he's leading us to an everlasting place. So with that, let's look at the text before us and see how God would speak to our hearts this morning. Taking from Exodus chapter 13, verses 17 to 18. Uh, first, Israel's journey out of Egypt. Israel's journey out of Egypt. Let me read the text. Exodus 13, verses 17 to 18. God leads them out in the way less expected by the wilderness. Then it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God did not lead them by the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near, for God said, lest perhaps the people change their minds when they see war and return to Egypt. So God led the people around by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up in orderly ranks out of the land of Egypt. Please take note of God's word Look at how specific the writer wants to put it for you and I to understand. God did not lead them by the way of the Philistines. You see, although it was near, the coastal route, it said, uh, historically via Maris, known as the way of the sea, was shortest and most common way to go. Still, also it was the road where Egypt's military outposts were. God knew the people were, Israel were not ready to face this yet. 